Hi, this is WoW Soloist here, and this is the Horde version of the Part 1 run-through for War of Thorns, the pre-patch to BFA, Battle for Azeroth, World of Warcraft. And you'll see this is my uh, Torin Cow. She was just recently boosted from a level 34 spy up to 110 so that we could get our allied races and so um, she reluctantly agreed to run through the horde part of the scenario so that we could see differences if there were any between the alliance run through uh, which is already on a separate recording linked below and this one and in fact we found some very interesting differences between the Ashenvale quest line we up until the, the edge of Darkshore and the Wall of Wisps. At that point, it way. gets consistent. But before that, the two quest lines, the stories diverge. And one way is a very interesting way they diverge, which has led me to some hints as to last minute who burned Teldrassil. And we'll find out tomorrow when they open up that cinematic. Um, and that drops, but in the meantime, I will put a separate small video up as to my last minute prognostication as to who burned it, and it is definitely related to a the difference between the two quest lines, this one and the Alliance one. Um, just a, another little comment, of course, is that my poor torn cow is now sitting with her uh, horns between her hooves, uh, feeling very sorry. Uh, that she had to kill so many beautiful little night elf sentinels and accidentally one druid who got caught in a conflagration before she noticed that it was there. Although she did run away from a second cat that got inadvertently aggroed, um, it chased her halfway around the island with the azurite, um, eating half her, her turtle at a time and, and not laying up until she finally lost aggro out in the sea somewhere. Um, so she did try to kill as little as she could. Uh, she's hoping she doesn't have to run, do any more killing next uh, quest line tomorrow, but uh, unfortunately I've looked ahead and yes, she does. Um, so yeah, she's moping right now because she's mourning all those poor night elves that she feels didn't need to be killed. But anyway, so here is the horde quest line. Now, unfortunately, it jumps all over the continents. So the first thing that I did was go to Orgrimmar and uh, then went to Undercity from there and uh, because you have to meet with Sylvanas in the royal quarters under Undercity so that's one of those tunnels off the corner uh, as you can see it's off of the corner just south of the sewers exit it's another tunnel like the sewers but it actually is indeed the royal quarter. Now the problem, it would be easier if they had sent you straight from Orgrimmar north west to go into Ashenvale, but they didn't. They sent you to talk to Sarfang and he is in the crossroads, or close to it, marshalling his army. So that means you have to fly far to the south, to Northern Barrens, to the crossroads, to pick up Sarfang, and then fly up to Astronar. So unlike the Alliance where it was basically tossed you straight to the Astronar quest giver in the middle of town and then all of the action was pretty much between there and um, Darkshore, the Horde line is longer because it spends so much time flying around but you get a really good view of the army so here you see Saurfang's army stretched out beneath you And if my analysis of how hard this was Look sounds a little one-sided, like alliance-sided, it's actually not. Um, I was reading this morning a bunch of uh, comments in the forums and on uh, Wowhead about uh, guides about 
how many Hordes have been considering desubbing just because of this quest line. Uh, I would say don't unsub yet. Uh, after the battle of the will order on, so we've got Ready two more quest place. lines that are going to be painted. Today, but after you get the to the battle of Lordaeron, then you know there's. And so then there's Kaltiris, and there's Zandalar, and there's all kinds of questing and, and story to tell. So, um, you know, grit your teeth, get through this piece, especially those of you who are Tauren or Druid. Um, I know it's tough, but if you get past the intro and into the expansion, I think, uh, I think they made this quite a bit tougher than it should have been, but I think it will get better. A lot better. Um, a lot of people are saying that there should have been a druid bypass line, a separate line for um, druids for Torin. I didn't. I saw one troll during a world quest once, and I've run a bunch of alts through the, on the alliance side through those world quests, um, and a couple of world quests with this character. I have seen one troll. Um, by far the army is composed of orcs and goblins. I have seen no Torrin, zero Torrin on this quest line at all, or in Darkshore at all as NPCs. I have seen no Forsaken in this army either. I think a couple of them pop up as rogues here or there in the Horde quest line, but I am seeing abs almost none other than her dark archers but or rangers but sylvanas's dark rangers are like herself turned high elves uh, probably turned by frostmourne and the lich king because elves are not normally turned by any other means to be forsaken but the um It's very interesting, the Horde composition, I was looking to see what it was, and it's mainly orcs and goblins. And I think that's telling, and, and a lot of people are saying there should have been a separate quest line for Tauren and Druids of all sorts, because, and possibly trolls, because um, being nature-oriented uh, races, they should not have been forced to fight the nature-loving and druidic night elves because druids gang together no matter what faction that they're in. Now while she's flying here there's another interesting thing that's happening because war mode can be turned on and there are no PvP PvE servers anymore. Um, there are a bunch of, you'll see sometimes people flying over various spots not only here in, in Darkshore but in Fellwood, where a lot of my alts are staying. And it's gankers in the air on their um, mounts looking for PvP battles. Not used to seeing that. Okay, here's our bell. Basically, he wants you to mark out the soldiers, the guards, for him, and he will poison Killing them. Killing is first. Its... Let me signal the others to begin their assault. This fire burns with purple smoke. They should see it rise above the trees soon. After you, champion, you mark the safe targets. I'll bring them down. Was a little bit of a challenge getting this working. 
A lot of things in this particular expansion pre-patch don't work when you're mounted. But having camouflage now back again is helpful. Ah! Ew. That should do it. How does it feel to single-handedly sack an entire city? You'll notice that the townspeople are still alive at this time. They're walking around in their Let's building. not waste time. And you're dealing with a Belf rogue and there are no Forsaken rogues around, unlike what greeted the Alliance when they arrived here after this happened. Let's teach these savages a lesson, shall we? What joy is there in this curse? So this is where the discontinuity comes in. So now you get to greet Sarfang and Sylvanas as they come riding into the empty town, which now has nobody in it. You just saw we killed 10 guards, and here comes the, the Horde army. But we killed 10 guards. We didn't kill any civilians. And yet... By the time that we just walk in here right now, all the civilians are gone and there's hardly even any wisps left. So although this flows closely together to keep the Horde quest flow going, in reality, this part of it we're seeing now should have happened after quite a while after the Belf incident because the Alliance would have uh, come in, found everyone dead, uh, rounded up all the, the wisps as they did, and then apparently left the town empty. Oh wait, it's not empty. It's on fire. Now, this is more interesting. The night elves would sack their whole their own town and set it on fire. Very weird. But anyway, they wander into the burning empty town and they send you off on an errand to talk, again, lots of flying around in the Horde one, um, to talk to a bunch of people over in the uh, northwestern corner of Ashenvale Horde camp um, to set up and prepare for the army's sup, arrival. Sup. Now, assuming since Astronar's already burning, one would presume that they don't stay there long. Dabu. Good repurposing here. This Horde outpost has been here since, you know, the start of Vanilla. So it's a useful Ooh. use for it. What can I help you with? For the Horde! They apparently turned off, since the Alliance run through I had, they turned off all the old quests for the, this phasing of the um, 
area, so now you don't get the, the baby quests in case you've never been in here before. Which is a good thing because this Glory exclamation point on this quest giver is pretty pale. So die. I would assume that he actually does have a baby quest there for me as well. But my understanding is they're turning that off. That's had a negative effect, by the way, if you still have a quest line. I had a Firelands quest line pop up on one of my characters who was in Felwood. And um, when she went, it turned out it was a side quest line, but she does need to finish it to get her, her title achievement. She already got the um, Hippogriff out of finishing Firelands, but... She can't finish it now because it's at the it's at a night elf cemetery at the edge of Astronar. And Astronar is now phased. So hopefully they'll give us a Zydormi version of Ashenvale, or it will go back to something I don't know what, after this whole War of Thorns is over so that we can finish up some of these old Cataclysm quest lines and such that still involve Ashenvale and Astonar areas. I think a Zydormi might be in order. Now it's interesting, they sent you ahead to get the camp ready, but they're st they haven't moved. They're still in Astronar. I serve the Horde. So we now have a question not only who burned Teldrassil, but who burned Astronar. Sometime between when the Night Elf army left, and why they left, who knows, to join Malfurion in Darkshore. The whole Between then and when the, you came in with the Horde army. Here are some of the Wisps. But there's none compared to in the Alliance one. Okay, so now here's where the quest lines come back together and start to make sense as the same timeline and story, is go find Sylvanas up at the border of Darkshore. You'll see later on in the quest line, by the way, that wisp wall is deadly. My uh, character here has got the Roots of Shaldrassil pants on, which are the healing pants, legendary. And if she hadn't had them on, she wasn't... What you are will we come if not no further, to this you. torment? Soldiers, no! Do not rush the... Oh, fools! At least now we know how dangerous the wisps can be. And even that close to the wall, she we was are the forsaken. We will I slaughter know, anyone uh, who stands in our meters, way. Twenty meters, maybe thirty, in inside the Thurbalg camp, and uh, it zapped out a lightning bolt and zapped her, killed her pet, and uh, she had like maybe fifteen percent health left with the pants. If she hadn't been jumped out of the way of it and then stood still, um, it would have one-shot her entirely. And the killing of Night Elves begins.
still a problem you'll notice in this particular quest line with the, at this time they hadn't fixed the problem with the pets. That pet combat was not working very well. I actually had to trigger the pet to go manually to go attack, even though now it's on passive, but it still had to be triggered. But you'll notice that the animal companion pet doesn't attack. Or, or sorry, doesn't stop. It keeps attacking when you what are we if not told it not to. to. Torment. So back to Zarmgar again. I think it may be because the Horde is familiar leveling in Ashenvale, but not with Darkshore, so maybe they're just reacquainting the Horde with the, there will um, be nowhere to run when next we meet this tonight. area. To Zorumgar, quickly! Also, some production discontinuities happening. What would you ask of me? You see the army, then you don't, and then you do. I have no time for games. So now it's time for blowing things up. A wall of wisps. Surely it is nothing our dark rangers and a few demolishers cannot overcome, my lady. The scouting party I led to Malfurion underestimated the wisps. They paid the price for doing so. We cannot destroy the wisps. Not in numbers enough to matter. But we may be able to disperse them. Interesting. The Wisps respond to Malfurion's call, but what if more of the forest were to cry out for help? Precisely what I was thinking. Champion, would you be so kind as to test our theory? Talk to me! Always look behind you Prepare for the best giver. Explosions? Don't assume. Funny you got it. That is somewhere closer to your objective, even though spin. usually it is. Notice they don't give you any firing control until you've gotten much closer. <clears throat> no accidental firing at something you shouldn't be shooting. Oh, and then I have a bad mouse trying to get my mouse to control this thing.
wasn't easy. Targeting these wisps is difficult. You're better off to target the trees. Because they are often near them. It's a very inaccurate firing machine. you shoot get shot. And apparently none of the ones in the wall can get shot. And then of course you fly off, still with no controls, but somebody forgot to turn off the targeting ray. Nothing's perfect. I was wondering if there was something else we had to shoot. What joy is there in this curse? Seems the wisps are susceptible to distraction. We will exploit. So she's accepted that this quest line is going to take more than one Sarfang, week. take a squad into Felby. Seek a path over the mountain into Darkshore, but leave the siege weapons under my command. We will squeeze Malfurion from both sides. War chief, there is no safe passage through Felwood. Find one or make one. Time is a luxury we do not possess. Hmm. No many smugglers, blight collar. I beg your pardon. I am not naive. There is little chance that Everlook receives all its cargo through legitimate means. Someone is using a hidden route through Felwood. Most smugglers would prefer to avoid the attention of the High Overlord. But I believe we can locate one who can be persuaded to assist us. Then it is decided. Sarfang, Nathanos, you will leave at once. Form ranks! Weapons ready! Ah, there they are. There goes the Horde army. That's actually Sarfang's army, I assume. Taking off to Felwood. Double time. I swear in the Horde questline I spent more time flying than anything else.
We pass through the wall on my command. Brace yourselves. Pass through the wall, quickly. I cannot hold it much longer. Once a breach has been made, the pain is bearable. Just give me a moment. Do not relent, hero. These savage elves would do you no such favor. Savage? Is a blood elf or a high elf, actually? Who are the predecessors of the blood elves, so she is effectively a blood elf. She is also, of course, sister to Illyria Windrunner and Vanessa Windrunner, who are, of course, both with the Alliance. And are both still alive. And that thing you see on the left, past the demolisher with the big tusks and the ginormous, you'll see a ginormous titan, blade in its skull. That is a servant of the old god. There he is. Nasty looking critter. Dead or at least dormant. And this is old vanilla. Um, what was happening here was the twilight cult were digging him up, or a variant of the Twilight Cult. Yes, the guys from Twilight Highlands, etc., etc. This was one of the earliest times you saw them, and they were digging up this old god servant. Most people who know Vanilla know that the Twilight Cult are a cult of the old gods. This is this. How do I burn this thing? Oh darn. There must be something. Oh! Shot a night elf and didn't even know it was there. Alright. Okay, so how do we shoot this thing? There has to be... Oh, let's go down here. No, Bear Eyes doesn't do it. Gotta be in the quest. Always track your quest so you get the weapon. It's a bomb. Don't stand too close. You can't complain. That the mobs don't respawn often enough. You'll see me do some running here. Shake off the aggro of this elf so that we don't have to kill more than we have to. Line of sight? Nah. Oh well. And again, you'll see the companion animal companion goes and attacks when I have not told the pet to go and attack yet. We need a target.
Now, why does a female night elf sentinel, because all the night elf and army is female, why do they make a male? Arg, when they're killed. Anyway. I guess I picked the one glaive that had all the mobs on it. Is that old god servant dead? Probably not. Probably not, but at least it is dormant. We are the Forsaken. We will slaughter anyone who stands in our way. The Old God reference here is interesting because most of us believe that once we get through the early part of the actual faction versus faction war, that this particular release of Battle for Azeroth is going to be much more about battling the Old Gods than it is battling each other. But that's a hope. Not a guarantee. Okay, now this is the same as the quest line in the world quest for the Alliance, except that you have to kill the spirit owls <laughs> instead of alerting the druids and kill the furballs, so... 50% in common and 50% different. It gets very messy when it's world quest time and there's poor dead spirit owls lying around and druids standing around and furballs everywhere. But it lets one quest do for both factions. Mostly. I had my pet on passive so I didn't kill any extra night elves that I didn't have to. Other than a couple that I had to get away. These furballs are wealthy. For frantic little bears, they seem to have a lot of gold. Dark Shore, it's very wild.
So at this point, the Horde and Alliance quest lines are pretty much aligned. Um, you see with the Horde, the taking over of the Furball camp, which you don't see in the Alliance, you smuggle in and, and smuggle the chiefs out. Not the actual Furballs, just their chiefs, so I guess the elites win again, but you don't actually see the takeover of the actual camp from the Alliance side. Again, how about kill seven rather than ten? But anyway. Anyone who, like me, caught Benthalus back in Cataclysm in Mount Ajal would know just exactly how horrible it is to be shooting spirit owls if you know how hard it was to tame that thing. Flying in the air, aggroing it in the air on your flying mount, dismounting off your flying mount and disengaging to throw yourself backwards at just the right point so that you landed on a little shelf against the rock wall cliff behind it so that you didn't die so that you could jump down and hit tame took a few tries to get that one right I'm out of range What are we if not slaves to this torment? fight the shredder, with the horde you fight the tree. So sad. And Sylvanas's reaction to these trees dying is not very sensitive or understanding of what's going on here, I don't think. What joy is there in this curse? Sylvanas, your foul deeds desecrate this sacred place. Undo Falador! Malfurion, how gracious of you to join us. Who would have guessed that you would come to protect your precious trees? Be gone, witch. No! My eyes! It burns! Where did you fly away to, little bird? I have no time for games.
Oh, and don't kill these furballs. They're labeled like the other furballs, but they're outside the quest zone and they don't count. As you see. But they're still very wealthy. This is where the hint is, don't get near that wall. Even though you think that you are safely away from it, you're not. And there are, you will run out of some mobs in certain areas and there'll be other mobs on the other side of that wall. Your pet can go to the wall, but you can't. wondering what he was cooking, but he only was heating up instruments or weapons or whatever. Ah, here you go. That's the one shot. I didn't kill the pet, actually, but if she hadn't had those pants on, she would have been gone. <laughs> Yes, it's arguably faster to let the pants do it or eat something. And I kept the pet back, but again, combat command pet isn't working well on the animal companion, and it seems to be unaffected by the wisp wall. I need a time. 
Now I sent the pet just to see what would happen to fetch. And it sort of got stuck. It's taking some damage because it was healing. But it did get the loot. Which makes sense. Being an animal, the pet would not be damaged by the wisps too much. Having had enough killing things for no reason. It's the old run away and drop aggro trick. We are the forsaken. We will slaughter anyone who stands in our way. gear and follow me. Bring every shredder we have. With this in our grasp, all who dare to oppose the Horde will fall. Proceed with caution, Champion. It seems the Alliance has beaten us to it. That it's ship my way or the highway, the pal. Which means I have a crow to hunt. Hey, I got your back. I don't have a target. This is where if you're a druid, you've got to be really careful. You see, there are druids here. I'm actually targeted that one without realizing it, and she turned into human form and then turned back into the druid again, or into night elf form and back into the druid again, which is strange. So this one I was like too far free to pull back. But after this I tried to not target the poor kitties. the new swimming animation though. It's quite cool.
islands are very frustrating. That's where I aggro the one I didn't want to aggro. So I'll just run away. I'll just ignore the druid for a while. I'll get choose hunts out of my turtle. Good AI on this cat. And it clicks on all the pets and the hunter. And basically forced me to swim about halfway around this island before it gave up. Ah, running up here and running away from it. That was... I wasn't going to give up swimming. Its aggro range didn't extend to the top of the island. At this point it was just get the azurite, minimize loss of life, and get this done. <laughs> My server usually used to be predominantly horde, but since the PvE, PvP realignment, even uh, random battlegrounds are no longer giving big presents like they used to pre-8.01 to Alliance to participate. In fact, the first battleground I've run in 8.01, the Alliance won handily, because there seemed to be like twice as many of us as there were horde. So things have changed, and I've not seen anywhere near as many players. Now this was, you know, four or five days after it dropped, rather than the same day it dropped, but a lot fewer Horde players than Alliance players on this quest line. Yo, can I help you with something?
This gig ain't so bad. Some Azer, right? That's the good stuff. Let me just hold on a second, will you? I'll add in a bit of this, smash it in real good. <laughs> a little gunpowder, some fuses, and copper chips, a couple of dashes of my secret ingredient, and voila! The modifications are complete. For some reason, this particular vehicle was just resisting my aiming entirely. Maybe because there were two of us. The other guy wasn't having a heck of a lot more success than me in aiming this thing. It just wouldn't go down. In fact, it wouldn't do anything. And the only way you could turn it was to turn yourself. beginning to think that this one wasn't going to be a get done and I wasn't gonna after all of this night elf killing I wasn't gonna get out of this quest line. The only thing I could do is back up until I could get enough distance that it went down. There. Finally it went down. And I did it by bending the vehicle forward. Once I got the distance right, I could aim it by going backwards and forward and turning side to side. It was just terrible vehicle. I would never recommend doing this one as a world quest. Oh my god, don't want to do it again. Can't even see the combatants. I mean, probably is the trees of life that you're killing, which is horrible, but anyway.
kill the ancients too. Ooh. Again, going forward effectively aims the machine. They do respond quickly. The problem with Dark Shore was never meant for these kind of long-range flying tactics and the trees get in the way. Now you've landed in the middle of the I have no time for Lance Quest line bombing, rock bombing world quest. Hello? And like the other quest line, the Alliance. Once you're finished here, it just leaves you. A lot of people apparently didn't know the world quests were up because there was nothing that told them in-game that there were world quests up that they should check for. Well, they're not up yet. Where is she? What joy is there in this curse? While Ben River is locked in a stalemate, and Malfurion knows it, we must stay the course for now. I will continue leading our soldiers through the wall while we await word from Sarpa. In the meantime, we will do all that we can to keep the Kaldori under pressure. We shall not afford them the luxury of a peaceful night's rest. This is war. What are we if not slaves to this torment? At least she leaves you with a bit of a speech that says it's over, and then poof, the world quests pop up. But Malfurion leaves you with a little speech and just leaves you on the docks, so... This has a bit more closure. Do not relent, hero. These savage elves would do you no such favor. So I'll leave it here because the world quests are, for the most part, duplication of what you've already seen. And I only ran a couple of them with her because uh, it was just getting too much at this point. But anyway, um, this is Wild Soloist signing out. And don't forget to check the Alliance uh, version of this and also my little uh, quick look at, guess at, who actually built the tree. Thanks. Bye.